Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Hayden Adams, and today we're talking about SEO or search engine optimization and how it pertains to Gatsby. So in terms of SEO, I look at three big components. We're gonna focus on these three things today in this video. The first is page content, how SEO relates to the content on each individual page of your website. The second section I'm gonna focus on is page structure, and that's related to how the page is built. The third section I'm gonna focus on is site structure. And I'll focus on all three characteristics as part of this SEO triangle, how it relates to Gatsby. And if you're asking yourself, hey Hayden, how the heck do you know how SEO works? Well, Google actually tells us. There's actually a handy search engine optimization or SEO starter guide that Google publishes through the Google Search Central. We're gonna go through this and go over the various pieces of how a site should be built and optimized, and then relate it back to how Gatsby builds and optimize the sites as well. And with that, let's get started. All right, what's up everybody? Once again, I'm Hayden Adams with Designer Who Codes. If you've watched my videos before, you know I'm a huge fan of the Gatsby starter default. If you are new here, you should also know that I'm a big fan of the Gatsby starter default. Why? Aside from this amazing, cool Spaceman logo, which I've named Jeff, along with this great color purple to match with Gatsby. Well, it's also because they've integrated one of the best tools Gatsby makes, and that's the React Helmet. The React Helmet allows for SEO within the website. Instead of having to do it all manually, Gatsby built the default with Helmet built in. So I can now look at this and say, how can I structure the content, the first piece at SEO triangle? So if we head over to our files, let me pull it up over here, number 97, SEO Gatsby. If we head into the Gatsby config and the Visual Studio code, there it is. Hello, welcome screen. You'll notice that the Gatsby plugin React helmet has already been installed in it, but it goes further. It says, hey, site metadata, what do you want the title to be? By default, it's Gatsby default starter, but I'm gonna change this and I'll say SEO plus, let's do SEO plus Gatsby and we'll save. What you'll notice is up at the top, the content is now changed to SEO plus Gatsby. Well, the right side changed, but how do we change the word home? Well, they've already built in the system to allow for the left side to be the specific name of the page and the right side to be the name of the website. So if we head over to source, pages, we go to index, and we'll head over to the Visual Studio Code. Note this SEO. They've already built the helmet into a component. So if we dig a little deeper, the import SEO is from components SEO. We head over to components. What we get is SEO and Visual Studio Code. So it already is pulling in the data from the site metadata, the title, description, and author, which of course is title, description, and author. And if we head over and go a little bit lower, what it does, it says, hey, the metadata will be description and metadata but it says basically default title and then default title is null. So it's essentially saying combine the two if there is a title or if not, just keep the website. What I mean by that is if I go to the index and I say, you know what, I don't wanna say title. I just want the home page to be just without a title. What'll eventually happen is it'll go away. But when you bring in that title, and I'm gonna say, this is all about SEO strategy. It's gonna combine both to bring the left to be specific about this page and the SEO title. This is big. Let's bring in the source to make sure we're doing this correctly. If I come over here and I bring back that Google Search Central, this is my SEO guide. It says create unique accurate titles. So the title tag inside the head is where you're gonna find the title of the page. So create good titles and snippets in search results. The best practice is to choose a title that reads naturally and effectively that communicates the topic of the page's content. Avoid single title across all your pages or large groups. 
as in what you don't want to do is each page should not just say SEO plus Gatsby. What Gatsby has already done is it's taken the SEO and it said on the left hand side, say this is all about SEO strategy. It is a specific title name. If we head back over here, we have a specific title name to this page. And then Gatsby also says, hey, remind us of the website name afterwards, which is SEO plus Gatsby. Past the title, Google's looking for some sort of description. We bring over the developers.google.com. It does recommend to use the description tag. Now the description tag is meta description with content. Now what merits a good description? Well, it just essentially says, put about 160 characters inside your page to sum up what the page is. So if we go back into Gatsby, and if we head over, where am I looking for? There we go. Inside the Gatsby config is that description. Kick off your next great Gatsby project with this default starter. So what I would really say is this website, if I could spell website, is all about helping you understand how SEO works with Gatsby. It can be short, sweet, and to the point, but this description relates to the meta description inside our page. If we head over, what I'm gonna do is actually do a Gatsby build. It's hard to see within the actual, I guess we can do it. You know what, let me take that back. Let me inspect this site. The Gatsby build, I was gonna to go to view source, but this will also work. That what I'm gonna do is go into inspect. It's gonna probably hiccup for one second until it finishes building or to be developing my Gatsby project. Cool. So I refresh the page. Inside of that head is nothing because we're still in inspect. So I thought, let's do this. Let's head over to Gatsby build and then we'll do a Gatsby serve. That's the real way of seeing all the information in the head tag. I thought it was gonna work and apparently it was not gonna work. So let's kick this into gear, build the HTML and we'll do Gatsby serve, which switches from 8,000 to 9,000. And yes, be prepared that it's gonna be like this, but if I search for description, there it is. Even though it is all minimized, which we'll get into a little bit later on, the meta react helmet, the name description and content. And if we look at all through this code, I know it's a lot to look at, but if we just focus, I'll do it this way. So it's a little easier to see. This website is all about helping you understand how SEO works with Gatsby. It takes that meta description and applies it to our website, just the way that Google wants it to be. In addition, you should write your code, if we head back to the index page, with titles, not just the title here, but the H1 title tag and relevant paragraph, H2s and H3s. Well, I don't really recommend more than one H1, it's not, Google doesn't recommend no, but I always say in order to make sure people know what is on this page, I always build my sites when possible with only one H1 tag. That to me is like a chapter title of a book. Most chapters don't have two titles, they only have one. So my recommendation is always having an H1 on a page not more, not less, unless you happen to have like a carousel that requires more than one H1. So we've talked about page content, but now let's focus on page structure. So Gatsby prides itself on being the fastest front end for the modern web. So why do we care about fastest? That's because Google cares about fastest. Google has an entire page called developers.google.com slash speed and their goal is to make the web faster. Any page you have out there, if you're brand new, this is a great tool to use, but you can analyze any website to see how fast or how slow this page loads. The great part about this is, is that most sites in Gatsby hit really high speeds, and I found older sites, <coughs> WordPress, basically run much slower. The reason for that is Gatsby's built on a fast framework. 
The reason for that also is that's why you have build times. The build times in Gatsby are taken up on your time and then when the site's finished, so for example, when I do a Gatsby build, the site is going from this React framework to a static website. What I mean by static website is the site is already pre-built for speed because the server doesn't have to render it. You might have heard the term server rendered. I don't really find the right phrase all of a sudden. But what I'm looking for here is a static site generated. It took 10 seconds to build this website. That is 10 seconds that your end user doesn't have to wait for. So if I kick a Gatsby, a Gatsby serve, I'm running locally, so this is not a fair fight. But what happens is this site is gonna run really fast. Now, if we dig deeper into this, what I really am a huge proponent of Gatsby for is the Gatsby image. If we head over to the page speed insights, I'm gonna use my website, which I'm gonna show you is Nautilus Designs and not the portfolio. If you look at my website, if we go to nautilusdesigns.com, the biggest load of any website is going to be images on your page. The videos load differently because they're gonna be loading through iframes and through YouTube slash Vimeo, but on a website, you're gonna have pictures even I have full screen background pictures taking up the amount of load time. And the great part of Gatsby is it helps balance that speed into your web page so the user's not waiting forever to see your page. If I look up the speed, yes, I get a 68 because I have a very big picture on the mobile, but I hit 96 on the desktop. So what it tells me is this picture's really big. The largest contentful paint is this picture on load, totally get it. And I also need to add a width and height, I am guilty as charged, so it's gonna yell at me for that issue. If we go back to the mobile, it'll tell me properly size your image. And this is what I do laugh about Google sometimes, is that I'm off by about 5K and it dings me for that. I'm like, really Google? I even use your WebP format. So notice here that this picture that I have sitting right here isn't a JPEG or a PNG, it's a WebP format. Now, what the heck is a WebP format? Let's do a Google search. WebP is actually a new format for the web developed by Google. That is so awesome. If we pull this up, a new image format for the web. I will, uh, nope, dismiss that for right now. So Google developed its own image format that makes pictures smaller, which of course Google wants to build, where'd that page go? Make the web faster. And if we circle all the way back around, I'm gonna go look for the Gatsby image. And if we look at Gatsby image, and if I scroll down, there's a whole bunch of frameworks we can use with Gatsby image, don't get a headache, hang on. But if we look at their different fragments, not frameworks, my bad, you'll notice that if you go down here and go down here, and I'm an image fluid person when it comes to not fixed, but you'll notice they say image sharp fluid with WebP. Note that again, they say image sharp fluid with the WebP format. What Gatsby does is it'll take a PNG or a JPEG and turn it into a WebP format, lowering the file size built through Gatsby. So if we circle back around one more time, I have so many different tabs, I'm gonna go crazy, but the fastest front end on the modern web is in part because they integrate this new image format in Gatsby which in turn makes your site load faster, which in turn makes the web faster, which in turn makes Google faster. Is your head spinning? Okay, so is mine a little bit. But basically, if we run down these two, we talked about the page content and we talked about the page structure in most importantly, the image sizes when it comes to how fast your page loads relates to the Google SEO because faster page speeds 
equally quicker response time so the user at the end will see your site faster. And Google treats that as part of the search engine optimization. The last piece I wanna focus on is site structure. So we're back in the Google Search Central and we're focusing on the simple URLs convey content information. URLs like the following can be confusing and unfriendly. Brandon's baseball card slash folder one two two four four seven four seven eight x two, as you can see here. What Google likes are structures that convey information. I have my website back up, Nautilus Designs, and if we click on Web Design and Development, we get a couple things. The title again is Web Design and Development, Nautilus Designs. The title of the page is Web Design and Development. And then when I go into any one of these pages, so if I go into the Coastal Coalition for Children, notice that it's localhost 8000 slash web design development slash CC for children. If we take a look at the bigger structure, this is kind of my favorite thing to do in Gatsby. Hello, Gatsby Development 404 page. This shows me all of the pages that are within my website. So this is the home page, but it shows that I have all my different site structures built out just like Gatsby recommends. Now I did this in part because I have different pages using markdown files. And what I did was if I go into my source folder, my pages, I have a file called web design development. And then these are dynamically generated using slugs and the slugs take into account my folder name which is web design development. This is the power of Gatsby. If I were to change this to say, Bob, what'll happen is, whoa, big time. It's like, hey, deleted all those files and added all those files. If I now refresh this page, all those folder structures now have the word Bob, which make absolutely no sense. Let me kick this back to web design development. Gatsby starts freaking out because it didn't work out the right way. So let me do, I hope I didn't kill my website in the process. One thing I do recommend if you do change some major structures, do stop your development server. I didn't do that and everything went haywire. Refresh the page and now we're back and we're all set to go. So Gatsby will build the structure if you build the structure properly. I had to be aware that I set up my markdown files to take into account the name web design development because when you click into, or I guess out of the page, web design development, what I have are slugs down here that pull the name based upon the folder slash slug name of a designer who codes CC for children, high pro foods. So while Gatsby provides the framework, you have to be aware how you're naming your files. So don't just name something untitled, but be purposely aware of how you're naming pieces to work with the file names, which then relate to your site structure. If you want to see more how I built my Gatsby portfolio, I have this video right here that breaks it down. I originally had it as portfolio and then eventually changed it to web design development. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.